This is the 18th of June, 2013. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. We got a sample from uh, Rocky Fork Feeders. Mike sent us this. And um, anyway, we're going to run it in a um, CP4 screw press. There's motor and inlet hopper of the press. Put a screw in here, and um, this is the screen through which we're going to squeeze out the liquid. This is the discharge cone. This bronze cone will slam shut when this air cylinder pushes it shut. Um, there it went. Yeah, that works. Uh, I've got uh, an air valve over here and um, air regulator. We're going to catch the press cake down here. Press liquid will come through the screen, drain out the back, and fall on this bucket here. Um, we have two pails of sample. Um, one's been thickened in a, uh, I believe, a side hill screen, and the other's non thickened. Um, the material looks like this, which is, looks like spent grain. See how it works. Okay, uh, we got Bill and Andrew here, and this is obviously the sample that's been pre thickened, and this is the one that hasn't. Encouraging if I take this and squeeze it in my hand, I can squeeze water out. It's not like mashed potatoes, it's not squirting between my fingers, so I do expect this one to work. We did have to change the screen in this press, I was ready to go an hour ago, but Fortunately, somebody checked the slot width, and the slot width on this screen is down at 10 thousandths of an inch or less, and which is way too fine for this material. This material would blind over that screen. So we've got one here. The slot width on this screen is 15 to 20 thousandths of an inch. Uh, I think we're ready to pour it in. I think I'll start with the one that could blind the screen and stop working. We'll see how it does. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll start with this one because I can form a plug and get going and see what we get. Then we'll throw this one in and see if it processes itself on through. Okay, there goes the first uh, shovel full of stuff. We'll start filling up this press. Whoops, we forgot to hook up the air. We'll get some air on this cylinder. In the meantime, we're getting a little press liquor out here. What kind of pressure do you want? Uh, low, um, 1520 PSI. Not gonna... You can see the material progressing through. We're getting some liquid out further down towards the discharge. First material out of here is gonna be wet. That is, we haven't squeezed this stuff. We've just conveyed it. So you see some water coming out, dropping into our pan. But right away, we're starting to get some cake. And uh, so like I promised you, this stuff's working well. The liquid's pretty dirty. We'll get samples and run of solids on it. Um, and um, yeah, I just scoop this one out of the way so I'll have a clean bucket when we get going. I'm waiting until some cake starts falling out. What air pressure do you get, Bill? I the damn thing ain't got cake. Huh? You don't have a cake. Yeah, I saw that. Go ahead and start it again. We're running 20 PSI. And there the screw starts, and we start the press again. We stopped to put a pressure gauge on. This is looking awfully good. I'm getting a steady flow of press liquor, press cake, and so, Bill, let's switch out buckets on three. Whoops. One, two, three. Start my stopwatch. Okay, test underway. Catching press cake, press liquor. Look at that flow of press liquor. This is uh, spent distiller's uh, grain. Uh, it isn't not fine milled at all. This stuff is coarse. Uh, we could probably squeeze more water out of it. If I get a handful and squeeze, uh-oh, 
not a drop, not a film between my fingers. Uh, this stuff at 20 PSI is coming out, it's dewatering beautifully. Uh, we don't get any better than this in a uh, Vincent screw press. Um, wow. Bill, grab a plastic baggie. I, I need a sample before Andrew throws everything in the machine. Is it almost empty? Almost. It's still running okay. Uh, oh, I need uh, as as received. Okay, go ahead and uh, throw in. Uh, there you go, Bill. I, I've got a handful here. That's uh, the pre-thickened stuff off the uh, manure thing, and um, we're. Ah, my stopwatch didn't start when uh, I hit the stopwatch. We will get a split. I just won't have the time flow. All I can say is it's heavy. Uh, we're near the peak performance. Okay, Bill's getting a sample of fresh liquor. And, um, okay, we're going to stop it now and uh, pull our buckets out. Okay, start the press again, Bill. And we're going to put the uh, unpre thickened in, and just we're not going to try and measure uh, the throughput. And it's pouring out. Of course, we left the press full with cake, and um, a little thicker there, but um, we're getting a heavy flow of liquid. What I'm looking for now is to see if this thing uh, lines off and quits working. Sometimes I'll do it, but um, so we're still pouring in. See how fast it's going down. Yeah, it's going down pretty fast. Still getting a good flow here. If I didn't turn off my uh, camera on that previous test, maybe I can time, see how many minutes it ran to get that sample. I just know it was a strong flow. It was still a strong flow. Second bucket going in. Pour it all in, slug it into the top. Sometimes a static head makes it a get upset. That is, if we put a PSI by putting, okay, we've got 18 inches, um, three-quarter of a PSI pressure, and that is not blinding. That's a good flow there. This side of the press, same thing. Uh, this sludge coming through the screen is worse than it looks. Uh, that is, it accumulates there. We'll have the solids and do them capture rate on this. Um, okay, Bill, go ahead and get press liquor sample, press cake sample. Give, give, don't lose a finger, Andrew, but try to scoop some out of the inside of there. Is it deep enough? And, um, okay, good. We got a as received, which we forgot to get. There's our press liquor sample. And we'll have cake here. No sign of blinding of this screen. That's what I was worried about. Uh, we've run almost five gallons, and you can see what happens when you run this through. We put in five gallons. We got out five gallons of liquid plus the cake. Um, yeah, this stuff, um, yeah, that's the way it is. No sign of blinding. I think we've done it. This is a rental press. Uh, you can see it was given some pretty rough treatment where it was used. They rented it for a couple years, and this is how it came back to us. They did buy a bigger and more powerful machine. That was what was. The reason I'm showing you this is because right back here, I have a KP-12, and that's the uh, machine I was recommending for this flow. Uh, if we were going to run it non, uh, without running it through the side hill screen to start with. So there's the inlet hopper. The screen is behind here. All the Vincent presses come with an uh, air regulator. And it has an air cylinder and a discharge cone. 
that door would rotate, that's what those wheels are for to allow that disc on the right hand side to rotate. Works well on spent grain. These handles are something you wouldn't need. They're for steam injection. Uh, but anyway, this is a model KP-12 and you get a little bit of a feel for how big it is. We're in the screw department. These are flights that go on our uh, screws. Um, they're stainless steel. Those are screws. Anyway, the screw department across the aisle here uh, where we uh, manufacture these screws, trimming up hard surfacing. Anyway, a lot of workstations here for uh, manufacturing screws. This is where we manufacture screens. Um, actually, I'm uh, in the assembly department. Here's a frame of a twin screw six press. And here's one they're putting together, a 16. This is a KP-16, one size larger than that KP-12. I was hunting for another KP-16 screen. Here's a screen for a 30-inch press that we're working on, the other half of that. There's a real short press we're building. There's a, a 16 for a paper mill, and another 16, and still another 16. These are uh, a powerful machine. They're going to have uh, 60 horsepower motors. Uh, this one's uh, my job for Nestle in Thailand. This is going to be a paper mill in Uruguay for sludge. Um, but I can't, oh, here's a KP-10. KP-10, um, that's the weld fixture for it. They're welding out the frame. The carbon steel thing with an alignment tool as this is how we weld out the frame. You can tell the stainless steel uh, framework, carbon steel bottom, stainless steel pan, and a uh, mild steel fixture. The discharge cone goes at this end. The uh, gearbox mounts on this uh, plate back here. And so that's what the press will look like, a KP-10, if you can get a feel for the size of that compared to a bigger one.